All right, 4.1, probability distributions. What we're looking at here is some definitions. For example, probability distribution, random distribution, oh, sorry, random variable, discrete random variable, continuous random variable, and the definitions of each of these. So, probability distribution is the probabilities for all possible outcomes of an experiment or sample space. So, we always graph on the y-axis the probability as a percent, and on the x-axis the random variable value x. Random variable is a quantity that can have a range of var values des designated x with individual values as little x. Now, discrete random variable is a variable that can have only certain values within a given range, such as the sum of two dice. Continuous random variable is a variable that can have an infinite number of possible values in a given range, often measurements such as volume or time. All right, let's look at some, ex some more definitions. Probability histogram. We're going to have to draw these in this unit. A weighted mean, and finally an expectation, or an expected value. All right. The probability histogram is a graph of probability distribution in which equal intervals are marked on the horizontal axis, and the probabilities associated with these intervals are indicated by the areas of the bars. Weighted mean is the mean of a set of numbers that are given weightings based on their frequency. Multiply each number by its weight or frequency and divide by the sum of the weights. Finally, an expectation or expected value is written as E at X. E at X of a probability distribution is the predicted average of all possible outcomes. And this is how normally E at X is calculated. E to x is a sum, the sum from 1 to n of xi times p at x i. All right, so x times p at x. And we take the sum of all the values of x times p at x in the, from the, the histogram graph that, you, sorry, from the probability distribution table that we calculate. All right. The weighted average value of the random variable is um, the expected value. Let's look at an example. Example 1. The table gives the percent breakdown of the number of rooms in apartments in a particular complex. So we're to identify the random variable, construct a probability histogram, explain the meaning of the individual bars in the histogram, describe the distribution, and calculate the sum of the probabilities. And does this confirm the results in, ex in the example? So here we are. We have a number of rooms, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the percent P at X is 15, 30, 42, 10, and 3. So the random variable is the number of rooms, okay, is the number of apartment rooms. Now, what we have to do is we also will have to calculate now our probability percent should be 100%. The reason why is this includes all of the values here, and we're going to create a probability histogram. So the probability goes along the y-axis as a percent, and we calculate up to the highest value, which was in the graph in the table. And these are the numbers, this is the values that we got. So one more time again, we had the numbers, they were here in the corner. These values up here indicate what numbers we draw the histogram. Remember that the bars are connected in a histogram, but the bars are not connected to the y-axis. So leave a space in the beginning. And make sure that when you do the maximum value, you get to a pretty high number over here so that you don't have to go up to 100 on the probability because the sum of it is 100. But maybe our maximum value in this case is like about 41 or 42. All right. So these are the number of rooms. And we can see based on here 
that the majority of the apartments have four rooms, around four rooms. Okay, now, going back to the next part, it says explain the meaning of the individual bars in the histogram. Each bar indicates the probability of those type of rooms existing in this apartment. You're to describe the distribution. So when we look at it, we look at this distribution. It looks like it's heavier on the on the left side than, there, than it is on the right side. So that's important to notice that it's heavier on the left than the right. Um, otherwise, it, it grows and it comes back down. It slightly might look like a bell to you, but the idea is, folks, if it's a bell, these two bars should be relatively the same. So it looks like there's a heavier sense of two, three, and four apartments than there is five or six apartments. Now, back to the question says, we're to describe the distribution, calculate the sum of the probabilities. Does this come from the results in the example? Well, the sum of the probabilities, as you can see at the bottom here, folks, this sum is 100. That means this is the only type of apartments offered in this complex. Okay, next, example number two. A spinner has two equal sectors, colored red and blue. Make a tree diagram to show the probability distribution for the number of times the spinner lands on blue when it is spun four times. So here we go, red, blue, and then we spin, and we spin again, and we spin again. And each one of these breaks up into red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. All right. Now, this is our tree diagram. Next step. What we need to do is calculate the probability. We have one in two chance of getting red, one in two chance of getting blue. And a one in two chance again of red and blue each time. And again, one in two chance of each one of these. And again, one in two chance of each one of these. So if we were to calculate our chances of getting, for example, um, lands on blue four times. Oh, sorry, folks. Okay, we need to calculate the probability. The probability will be one half times one half times one half times one half. So let's look at a table. We have a distribution of blues. And we can go from 0 to 4, number of blues. And we're going to talk about how it was distributed, the frequency, probability, and x times p at x. So to get the number of blues, no blues means you would have red, 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 red. That only occurs once if you were to look at the, t if the tree diagram that you drew. P at x is going to be 1 in 16. So you have a 1 in 16 chance of that actually occurring. Then we take the x, which is the number of blues, times P at x, and that gives us 0 times 1 in 16, which is 0. Next one we could have is red, 1 blue. 1 blue means red, 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 blue, red, red, blue, red, red, blue, red, red, blue, red, red, red. So it could be any one of these. How many are there? There's four. Four in a total of 16 possibilities. Then we take our x times p at x, and we get 1 times a quarter, 1 times 4 over 16. And we do the same for two blues. So we'll have blue, blue, red, red, or red, red, blue, blue, red, blue, red, blue, blue, red, red, blue, blue, red, blue, red, blue, blue, red, red, and red, blue, blue, red. That occurs six times, six out of 16, which reduces to three eighths, which is two times three eighths. And we will get our x times p at x. And we do it again for the next one. This time it's three blues. Here are our combinations. Four, there are four possibilities, four sixteenths, which equals three times one quarter is x times p at x. Next. If we have four blues, the only possibility is blue, 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 blue. There's only one occurrence of that, which is one sixteenth, which is, and then we multiply four times one sixteenth. Now, what's important here is actually the sum. We have to verify that our probab 
that our probability is going to equal 1, and you should be able to add these values up, folks, and get 1. 1 16th plus 4 16th is 5 16th, plus 6 16th is 11 16th, plus 4 16th is 15 16th, plus 1 16th is 16 16th. So the probability sum should always be equal to 1, which is 100%. But more importantly, is our expected value. This sum that we're calculating is the expected value that we're looking for. So we add up all of these. So essentially, that sum notation that we're doing, the sigma notation, is all we're doing is adding up all the x times p at x values, so the expected value. And we have a number of and 2. So that means it's expected to have two blues are expected at any point of choosing when you choose those random uh, spinners. Okay, let's look at another example. Well, we need to make a probability histogram of what we just did, of the distribution table. So we have our bars at the bottom, which is the number of blues, and our y-axis, it's going to have a probability of up to 40% because we don't have anything bigger than that. And we plug in our values and looking here, hopefully you see that here we have an actual normal distribution. This is a normal distribution and the beauty of this is that the bars on either side are equal weight. So again, a normal or bell curve distribution. Part C, you're to calculate the expected number of times that the spinner lands on blue. Interpret the results. So we found the sum as i equals 0 to 4 of x times p at x, which gave us a value of 2. We did that in the chart that we did earlier. So again, we could look back at the chart. So I'm just going to move back to the chart, and then we'll understand what this is saying in just a second. Okay, so equals 2, and we're going to come back to this in a second. So when we look back at our chart, we did calculate the expected value, which is the total sum of x times p at x, which is 2. What does that mean for the question? Well, when we get 2, we, multi we add all those values that we had, folks, and we calculate it. This 2 means that it's expected, the expected average, okay, the expected average of uh, the number of times the spinner lands on blue is 2. The expected average that the spinner lands on blue lands on blue is two times. Okay. Next. All right. One more example. Example three. A lottery has a $10 million grand prize, a $500,000 second prize, and ten fifty thousand dollars third prizes. A ticket costs $5.00 and 4 million tickets were sold. What is the expected value of each ticket? So, to calculate this, we actually have to do some math. Are you ready? Here goes. The expected value is going to be $10 million times 1 in 4, 4 million, which is the number of tickets that were sold, plus 500,000, times 1 in 4 million that were sold, plus 50,000 times 10 prizes uh, in the 4 million that were sold. And we're going to subtract 5. Why are we subtracting 5? Because each of the tickets costs us $5. So this is the prizes. This is how much it costs in terms of you to earn the ticket. What is the expected value? Well, it's going to be negative 2.25. What does that mean? Well, that means that you will lose $2.25 in terms of 
if we have the number of prizes minus 5, means that the tickets cost quite more. Now, are lottery tickets a good investment? Well, the answer to that, guys, is no. There's no question about it not being a good investment. Now, how could the lottery be adjusted to make buying a ticket more attractive? Well, they can lower ticket prices or they can offer more prizes, folks. But again, the bottom line is the company wants to make money. So this 225, they're making 225 off of every ticket based on the prizes and the cost of the ticket. Okay. Well, that's the end of the video, folks. Have a numerical day.